Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. Hey folks, today we're going to talk about sleep and losing weight. Now you may say, what's the connection? What does sleep have to do with losing weight? Well, there is a big connection, no pun intended. Overweight and obesity are said to be contributing factors when it comes to developing type 2 diabetes for many people, not everybody. Now, hold on. That doesn't mean that everybody who's overweight and that every obese person will automatically develop type 2 diabetes. No, that's not necessarily the case. That doesn't necessarily mean, okay, well, if you don't get enough sleep, you're going to end up developing type 2 diabetes. It's not so cut and dry. That may not be the case for you, but there is a connection and a lot of overwhelming evidence that shows the link between being overweight, not getting enough sleep, and developing other health problems such as type 2 diabetes. Now, it is said that there are specific consequences of not getting enough sleep. It affects your mood and having mood changes. Uh, anxiety, depression, poor memory, poor focus and concentration, poor motor function, dealing with fatigue, uh, a weakened immune system, weight gain, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, which by the way, leads to type 2 diabetes, increased diseases, again, like diabetes and heart disease, increased risk of early death and so forth. Now, I'm not trying to be all morbid and uh, try to scare anybody, but I do want you to pay attention to the fact that when you don't get enough sleep, it can affect your weight. It can affect your weight to the point where it makes it so difficult for you to lose weight and even maintain a healthy weight, dealing with a lot of cravings and so forth. But listen, I'm here to tell you, and I'm living proof. That with simple lifestyle changes to your diet and exercise, many people are losing weight and you can too. They're coming off medications for diabetes and are able to reverse type 2 diabetes. Listen, that was my story. You know, a while ago, I learned the value of getting good quality sleep every night, not just, you know, during the week when I have to go to work, but I'm talking about every night. I learned that it contributes to losing weight and having more energy, having a clear head, better focus, and better moods throughout the day. So I want to ask you a question. If you're fighting with cravings, if you're dealing with uh, weight gain and it just seems like things are out of control, do you find yourself sluggish during the daytime and craving food at all kinds of times, especially late at night? And maybe you're not getting enough sleep at night. Do you routinely eat something sweet just before bed? That was me. I'm talking about like a piece of cake or even a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It was crazy. Do you find yourself waking up in the middle of the night with a whole bunch of cravings and you just, I mean, you go to bed with cravings and you wake up in the middle of the night and you have cravings and it's hard to go back to sleep and your mind is racing and then you you have to get up early and go to work. Listen, you're not alone. So if you answer yes to any of this, I want you to stick around to hear the rest of today's episode. We're going to talk all about food cravings, sugar cravings, and why you may not be getting enough sleep and how that's affecting your your weight loss and your, your weight management. And also, you know, why a lack of adequate sleep may be contributing to your weight gain. We're going to talk about all of that. Now, listen, don't worry. You're not alone, like I said. So let's discuss some practical ways to change your lifestyle, stop those cravings, lose weight, and reverse type 2 diabetes. Stick around. Hey, my friend, you don't want to miss this one. Welcome to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo. My goal is to help diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. You know, I used to be 268 pounds. I've mentioned it before on this podcast, and if you're a regular, you probably know my story like the back of your hand. Yes, I was 268 pounds, folks. I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes back in August 2020. 
And it was clear that I needed to lose weight in a lot of it. You know, my size, me being overweight and obese, and my lack of getting adequate sleep, not to mention poor eating habits on, on a regular basis, they were having a negative effect on my overall health. Yes, I dealt with high blood pressure, hypertension, acid reflux, issues with my heart and breathing. It was all kinds of things going on. I used to have a habit of eating late at night, especially if I couldn't sleep. I mean, it just was a thing. I just had all these cravings and I would just snack, snack, snack. It could be chips. It could be cookies. It could be peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It could be a piece of cake. Oh my gosh, it was all kind of things. I used to even pop pop tarts or drink a couple bowls of cereal late at night. And even worse, I would drink fruit juice in the middle of the night. You know, folks, my bedtime, my normal bedtime back in the day was 2 a.m. every night, no matter what was going on. Then I would wake up maybe in the, a couple hours later hungry again. Crazy, right? <laughs> and then getting up at six o'clock, maybe seven o'clock, and it, it was bad. I was getting an average of maybe three to four hours of sleep a night, you know, and even then that was decent. I used to pop melatonin pills to help me to, or supplements, I should say, to help me to get a good night's sleep. And even then I just still woke up groggy and just feeling out of it. So imagine doing that every day. And before you know it, I was gaining more and more weight. What about you? Does this sound like you? Do you have issues going to sleep and staying asleep? Are you having those cravings? It's tough, folks. I know it. So I had to transform my life. I was able to do it. It wasn't easy. But I made the decision that I was tired of being sick and tired, literally, <laughs> like, like the cliche says. I was tired of being overweight, folks. I was tired of being sluggish. I was tired of those headaches. I was tired of like heavy memory loss and just forgetting simple things and just not able to function at work. Not 100% there, you know, around my loved ones, just all kind of things was going on. But you know what? I was able to turn my life around, folks, eventually. You know, I went through that diabetes scare. My life changed. Certain things happened on a personal level that just kind of had me to the point where I was like, enough is enough. I had to get over stressful situations. I had to de-stress my life. I had to de-fat my life, get all this fat off my body. And I'm here to tell you folks that I was able to lose over 80 pounds by changing not only the things that I will uh, put in my body, such as food and the things I drank, but also the things that I did to my body, increasing my exercise and getting adequate sleep at night. It was important to me. So if I can do it, I know you can too. And there were certain things that I did. You know, I learned about sugar and the effects of sugar on the body. I stopped drinking sugary drinks like sodas, fruit juices, uh, sports drinks, those high energy drinks. It's crazy. I had to get to the point of weaning myself off of sugary foods and high starchy foods and replace them with more green veggies and more whole fruits and high salty foods. I had to get rid of all of that, folks. I had to stop eating late at night. And for me, eating late at night used to be a regular thing. And I was like, no more. I had to change, folks. I, I, I had to. And as I mentioned earlier, exercising regularly. Now, for me, I, I hit it hard. I was like, man, you know what? I am going to exercise at least three to five times a week because that was just very important to me to move and get my uh, ability and mobility, flexibility, my endurance, all of that. I had to get it up because I wanted to do more movement. I wanted to be more active. So those are all the things that I did, but also I had to learn to get proper sleep, folks. I'm telling you, and I'm going to get more in depth into that and why it's important to get proper sleep. You know, this episode is all about learning how not getting enough sleep can make losing weight more difficult. That's what this episode is all about, folks. You see, without getting enough sleep, your body has a hard time functioning properly. I mean, there's studies after studies that are that have shown this. Literally, 
Uh, globally, they've done studies, not just here in the U.S. You see, when you have sleep deficiency or lack of adequate sleep, it can be uh, associated with all kinds of chronic problems, like I mentioned earlier, uh, especially problems that affect your heart, your kidneys, your blood, your brain, your mental health. Listen, when people are starved of sleep, late night snacking is increased. <laughs> you start snacking more. You start eating all kinds of high carb foods late at night. You know, it is said that people are indulging in increased snacking more and more. Those high carb foods, especially uh, eating between 7 o'clock and 7 a.m., and still getting less amount of sleep, sitting up watching TV late at night and just snacking on the popcorn and the chips and the cookies and you know what you're eating. You know, it is said that when you're sleep deprived, you're going to eat snacks twice as much as you would normally eat. So you need to get more sleep, folks. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. You know, studies have indicated that short sleep times and duration is associated with obesity and the risk of future weight gain, not only in adults, but also in children. So when your kids are sitting up playing video games and they're drinking Pepsi and other high sugary drinks and snacking late at night while you're asleep, I, hey, folks, it's going to affect their weight and in some cases lead to obesity and the risk of future weight gain. You know, when you have poor eating habits, including increased meals, you know, eating a lot, eating a lot of snacks, eating uh, late at night um, and eating a whole bunch of uh, high carb foods, you're also less likely to eat fruits and vegetables. Think about it. You're not eating fruits and vegetables late at night. <laughs> I know I wasn't. Maybe you are. Maybe you know somebody who is. But you know what? There's also that risk of eating more fast foods. How many times have you gotten home late from work or just somewhere and you just went to the drive through and you decided, you know what? I'm hungry, so I'm going to stop and get something. And what do you normally get? You get a burger and fries or even a chicken sandwich is fried chicken or whatever it is, whatever's open late. <laughs> uh, and you'll get a soft drink and a soda. And a lot of times those uh, fast foods, uh, 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 restaurants are giving you high sugary drinks. You know, your sweet teas and your lemonades are high in um, fats, you know, your, your saturated fats. And guess what? You're eating late at night. So no wonder why we gain so much weight, not getting enough sleep eating a whole bunch of high fat, high carb foods, unhealthy fats, you know, because fats aren't to be demonized. You know, there are healthy fats and there are non-healthy fats. So unfortunately, we're eating a lot of deep fried foods late at night. Well, I stopped, but there was a time where, hey, I would stop and get a two piece, you know, chicken dinner with biscuits and put honey on it. And it was nothing. And a couple hours later, guess what? I was still hungry. You know the drill. You probably been there. If you're eating something from fast food right now, you listen to this late at night, put it down, throw it in the trash, get some fruit, drink more water. <laughs> listen, folks, I, I know I'm kind of being uh, funny here, but it, this stuff is serious. Both better sleep quality and quantity and getting longer sleep are documented to be associated with you having a higher level of success when it comes to weight loss. So let me say that a different way. Folks, get better sleep, get better quality sleep so you can have greater success in your weight loss. Now you may say, okay, again, Oscar, what's the big deal? Why does getting enough sleep, you know, contribute to me losing weight? Listen, when you're sleep deprived, hunger increases. Again, I've already said it. And your appetite increases. So guess what? You keep eating more and more bad foods or not so good foods or unhealthy foods. You're going to have more cravings. And guess what? Nine times out of 10, you crave those things that are not healthy for you. Listen, I'm not here to body shame you. I, you're hearing from a guy who's been there. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. So why is sleep so important again? Sleep affects your weight by controlling hunger hormones. 
These hormones include, now I'm getting a little technical here. These hormones include ghrelin. That's that, uh, what they call the hunger uh, uh, hormone. That's the one that affects your appetite and increases your appetite or lets you know, hey, it's time to eat. That's ghrelin. But then you have leptin, which increases the feeling of being full or being satiated after you eat. So when you get enough sleep, your body helps to control those hormones. They work better. And if you're eating proper foods um, that are more filling, you're going to increase leptin. So I'm not going to get all deep in this, but you can research it for yourself. In a nutshell, during sleep, ghrelin, that's the uh, hunger hormone, it decreases because you're using less energy when, than when you're awake. Think about it. When you're asleep, you don't need a lot of energy to sleep. Your body starts relaxing, is being calm. You're not using your muscles because you're laying still. And so that the need for ghrelin, the hunger hormone, starts being, uh, starts being reduced. But then a lack of sleep, however, elevates ghrelin and suppresses leptin. Remember, leptin is that hormone that helps you to feel hunger or, or signals to your body that, hey, we're full, we're good, we don't need any more food right now. So this imbalance makes you hungrier which may increase the risk of eating more calories or basically eating more food, which again leads to weight gain. So now during the day, that's when you're most active, right? And your body uses more energy than when you are asleep. So food is a source of energy. Food is the energy that your body needs to survive, right? So again, getting the good nutrients, healthy nutrients and so forth is what the body needs for fuel and for energy, like a machine, right? So that machine needs energy to function properly. That's why it's so important to give your body good food full of essential nutrients. If you give your body bad stuff, guess what's going to happen? Your body is going to eventually uh, show signs of wear and tear, and that's not what we want. So at night, while we're asleep, your body is designed to heal and rejuvenate itself. Your, your cells start regenerating, your brain starts to process things that, you know, from the day your body goes into now fix it mode. So that's why when your uh, body is relaxed, then your cells can do what they need to do to regenerate, to uh, help you to uh, regain energy so you'll be good to go for the next day. But now when you disrupt the healing process by not getting enough sleep, the body uh, doesn't complete its assignment. Now, imagine if you do that day in and day out, day in and day out, like I did, getting just four hours of sleep at night. And I thought that was good. I thought I was being consistent with just getting four hours of sleep, but it affected me in the long run. I gained a lot of weight, um, again, had mood swings, all kind of things was just going on. So again, you do that long enough, like I did, you'll begin to experience health challenges. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. Studies have shown, though, that if we start getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep a night, that our bodies will be healthier, we'll uh, start uh, to be able to regulate uh, our weight and, and even get to the point of starting to lose weight. But the trick is, again, not just getting enough sleep, but also being mindful of what we put in our bodies and what we do to our bodies. So folks, uh, here are my recommendations for getting proper sleep. So here we go. Number one, make up your mind to get at least seven hours to eight hours of sleep a night. I know that's a struggle for a lot of people, especially if you're not used to it, but I want you to make up your mind to get at least seven to eight hours of sleep. Number two, Set yourself up for success. Now, how do you do that? I want you to start sticking to a routine, create a schedule, you know, waking up and going to bed at the same time every day and night, even on the weekends. Yes, even on the weekends. I know you like to uh, chill out on Friday nights and go to bed extra late and just uh, sleep in on Saturday mornings. So take the next 30 days or so and put yourself on a schedule, right? So again, that's a part of setting yourself up for success. This starts with sticking to a schedule. 
Um, another thing within uh, setting yourself up for success, stop watching TV before going to bed and looking at the news and watching all these sports things and or sports matches. I know um, we love to watch our sports. We love to watch our favorite news channels. That's definitely not something you want to do before you go to bed because your mind is overstimulated, you know, and it's just going to make it hard for you to go to sleep. And sometimes you'll be dreaming about <laughs> the stuff that you watch and definitely cut this, the television off before going to bed because you don't want to fall asleep with the television on. Okay. Start your nighttime routine with cutting the television off. Another thing you may want to do is set up your alarms. So what I do is my routine to get into bed is roughly about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Definitely, I start winding down one hour before bed. So if my normal bedtime now is nine, excuse me, 10 o'clock, then uh, around nine o'clock, I'm starting to wind things down. If my bedtime, let's say, is 11 o'clock and I'm, use, I'm giving you examples, okay? So if your bedtime is, let's say, 11 o'clock, so by 10 o'clock, it's time to wind things down. You know, you may want to do some uh, reading before you go to bed. You know, for those of you who um, are spiritual, you know, praying 30 minutes before you go to bed, reading your Bible or whatnot, and, or reading your devotional 30 minutes before going to bed, that's a good way to just relax your mind, ease your mind. You may want to do some breathing exercises. Um, and that's like number three, uh, do some breathing exercises to help you to, um, again, just relax your nerves and clear your mind of things that happen uh, throughout the day. Um, number four, stop eating late at night, especially sweets. We already talked about that. You know, if you watch what you eat and when you eat, that's going to help you to avoid those heavy meals, especially uh, late at night. You you don't want to be eating late at night, folks, especially not, you know, so close to going to bed. For those who drink alcohol, you know, I, I don't recommend that you drink alcohol, period. But if you are going to consume alcohol, don't do it too close to bedtime. You know, it could cause uh, heartburn and, and also make it hard for you to fall asleep. You know, stay away from soda, sweet teas, your coffees and chocolate after 2 p.m. If you can or definitely before you go to bed, you want to cut out caffeine and all that stuff because it said that caffeine can stay in your system for five to six hours. So keep that in mind. So number five, if you're having sleep issues like sleep apnea and, and other disruptions to your sleep on a chronic basis and it just seems like nothing you do works. Of course, you want to see a doctor and a sleep specialist um, because it could be some other things going on in your body. So, folks, hopefully these recommendations are uh, something that you can Im implement in your life and make a difference in your life. But just keep in mind, the main thing is be intentional about getting adequate sleep every night is going to benefit you in the long run is going to be better for you uh, when it comes to uh, not only losing weight, but improving your health, your overall brain function, uh, your cognitive function, memory, uh, and so forth, and just g helping you to feel better. Listen, my goal is to help you to be focused, to live a fit life, and to feel alive every day. And guys, you know, I'm living proof that not only can you reverse type 2 diabetes and send diabetes into remission, but you can, as you get older, not decline in your health, but be stronger, be faster, be more alert, um, be more energetic, have greater endurance. I am almost 50 at the time of this recording, and I feel great. Uh, all because I made some lifestyle changes. Was it easy? No, it was very, very hard at times, but I made up my mind that I was going to stay focused. I was going to keep moving. I was never going to go back to my old lifestyle of poor eating and poor uh, habits. I wanted to turn my life around and I am so glad that I did. Now, folks, um, as I wrap up today's episode, you know, I always talk about different resources to help you to 
make better food choices, to make better choices when it comes to not only eating, but things that you're doing to your body. And there's a couple of um, books that I've shared before on this uh, podcast. They're by other authors. You know, I haven't written a book yet, but one day I will on nutrition and reversing type 2 diabetes, you know, so I'm speaking that into existence. So follow me and one day you're going to hear me advertise my own book. But for now, I do want to share with you a couple of resources, including one that I had did create that I want to share with you. So I'll share my resource first. It's a healthy food shopping guide. Um, it's the fruit and veggies edition. If you go to my website at uh, www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com, you can download it for free and enjoy it and share it with other people. Um, a book by, and also there's a book by an author. His name is James Clare. I talk about this book a lot. It's called Atomic Habits. An Easy and Proven Way to Build Good Habits and Break Bad Words. That's a very good book on habits and how to break habits, including food cravings and so forth. Uh, another book is by Jessie and Chispe. Uh, she's known as a glucose goddess on social media. She wrote a book called The Glucose Revolution, The Life-Changing Power of Balancing Your Blood Sugar. That's a good book, uh, it, whether you're diabetic or not. It's good to know about blood sugar and how certain foods spike insulin production and glucose and so forth. So it's a good book. Check it out. They have an audio book of both of those books I've mentioned. And Dr. Mark Hyman, uh, he's a great resource. He shares a lot of practical information. He wrote a book uh, called The 10 Day Detox Diet, The Blood Sugar Solution. Um, that's a very, very a practical book on how to kick addictions to sugar and so forth. So check out that book as well. Listen, if you're ever feeling empty, like a car, and you're just feeling drained of fuel, I want you to allow motivation to be the premium fuel that keeps your tank full along your journey through life and your decision to live a healthy lifestyle. Listen, it's okay to stop and refuel, but keep moving. You have somewhere to be, and that place is a healthy lifestyle, longevity. That is your journey. That is where you need to head toward, and that is a, pay, a place called longevity. And if you keep moving, you'll reach it. And when you reach it, you'll keep moving, if that makes sense. So folks, like I always say, stay focused, keep moving, never go back, leap forward, bounce back because you can, my friend. And above all else, trust God. You got this. I believe in you. Be sure to visit the website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com for access to free resources and other information that will help you along your journey. If you would like to submit a question or a comment about the show or to learn more about the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.